I have been getting some really crazy battle reports with Zuge Liang in the open field in KVK, and this is battling against some of the strongest kingdoms in the game. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of these really crazy battle reports, but also the critical testing that helped me land on the very best Zuge Liang combos that you can use to get crazy results in the open field. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskul Gaming, and when Zuge Liang landed in game, I expertised him before the first day of the wheel spins had even ended. I then battled with him in KVK. I'm telling you this because my experience with this commander is not theoretical, it's based on actually using him in some of the most intense fighting in the game. And if that's the kind of advice you're interested in, then consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss my next video, where typically I'm either expertising or showing an expertise commander the moment that they land in the game. So in this video, here's what I want to do. I want to remind you of the skills that are on Zuge Liang. I then want to show you the test results where we battled with tons of Zuge Liang combos to figure out which ones are actually the best. And then I'll share with you a little bit of my experiences with this commander pulling down 10 million kills in a matter of days. And by the way, that's with my second best set of gear being equipped to him. So I don't even have my best armaments and best equipment on him. That's reserved for Boudica Prime, who's running a different combination entirely. So let's get started with Zuge Liang, who, by the way, is just better Esong. Like, if you're wondering, how do I think about this commander? Just much, much better Esong. We proved in our testing that at about 5-5-1-1, five, five, that's maxing the first two skills, bringing them to 5, you'd get an equivalent result to an Esong. And I'll show you that in the reports in a minute. So if that's true, where you can use a 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one Zuge Liang and do as well, as an expertise T song, sure, they do slightly different things, but that's important. So why does it work this way? Well, he does 2,000 damage factor to five targets, and the damage dealt to each target is reduced by 15% for each additional target that you hit. This is crazy. One thing that we learned from Wick Gaming back in the day is that this damage reduction caps out at 50%. Once I hit you, I think you hit like four or five targets, it'll stop going uh, to, to have more damage reduction per additional target that you hit. And that's important because that means the more stuff you hit with this commander, the better. It's just always better, okay? Uh, it does spread your damage around more, but that's a different matter entirely. In addition, all targets deal 15% less damage for the next three seconds. Well, that's crazy. That's very strong. So he's doing AoE damage and AoE debuffs. And in addition... Second skill, 30% health. Now, let me tell you from experience, 30% health is really good, but it is not enough. A commander with 30% health and no other defensive stats is a squishy, swarmable glass cannon. Sounds crazy. It's true. Now, in addition, they also deal 5% more damage with archers. And when this commander's troop is inflicted with a control effect, that includes things like silence, disarm, and heal immune, for example, it has a 50% chance to negate that effect and deal direct damage of 500 to the attacking troop. And it does that once every five seconds. Crazy. Third skill, if you have only archers, deal 20% extra skill damage, and your normal attacks have a 10% chance to increase your attack of your archers by 50% for three seconds. Okay. Seems very good. Similar to Esong. Fourth skill. Whenever this commander uses an active skill, their troop gains the marquee effect, increasing damage dealt by 10% for 10 seconds. If it doesn't already have it. Now, if you do already have marquee, then what happens instead? When you use an active skill, they'll consume the marquee effect to deal direct damage to up to three enemy troops, damage factor 1,500. Now, that damage is not modified by buffs to skill damage. Okay, but it's still a lot of damage nonetheless. Finally, the expertise skill. When you enter battle, you just start with the marquee effect. You'll see this as sort of a glowing effect around the commander. Um, and this increases your damage by 10% for 15 seconds each time your active skill deals skill damage. Um, or your fourth skill does skill damage 
this commander's troop gains 30 rage, which is also amazing. So just like Esong, you have a boost to the damage you deal, you generate extra attack, you are generating rage, like there's you're doing area of effect damage. Just think of this commander as better Esong. If you're fighting in the field, the talent build is easy. You just use this. Very simple. If you're rallying, I suppose the build that you use is the full archer build, which would look something like this. You then go over here, grab these talents over here, grab these talents, and you should have only two talent points left over. So you typically go like so. And there is your typical rallying build. Now, I don't think you should be rallying with him as the primary. I haven't seen that really be a thing. The rally with him is Boudica primary with Zuge Leong, or I, I've seen a little bit with Henry, but not much. Honestly, I see more Boudica. I, I suppose you could do Zuge Leong primary and Henry as the secondary. That would be pretty reasonable, and this would be the build that you'd want to use. Now, this video is more about testing, though, and, and helping you understand which pairs are actually the best. And we tested an Ark of Osiris practice match. We didn't use equipment. We didn't use armaments because we wanted to get a sense of kind of whether or not he should even be primary or secondary or how exactly you should match him up. So if I scroll all the way down to the testing that I had done, this was with Yoda 808, I can show you these battle reports now. And what was surprising is that archers were beating cavalry. You've got Boudica Prime with Zuge Leong beating Nevsky Joan. 28,000 to 25,000, that's insane. In addition, we ran it back, 27,000 to 26,000. And we ran it a third time, 27,000 to 25,000. If you're wondering what the very best Zuge Leong pairing is in the game, it should not be surprising to hear that it's Boudica Prime with Zuge Leong. That is the best pairing. From there, what can you do? Well, against a Guan Skippy, 41,560 to 17,700, that is a brutal result. I honestly almost titled this video Rip Guan Yu, but that would be super misleading clickbait because Guan Yu is still a great infantry commander. Uh, yes, he got beaten, but we ran now a Skippy Prime with Sargon, which is actually the best infantry combo and you get 33,600 to 25,800, still a brutal result. We ran it again, 36,000 to 25,000, and then I tried running Boudicca with Isong versus Boudicca with Zuge Leong, and you're looking at 31,000 to 21,000, almost uh, 22,000. So almost a 10,000 sev wound differential in favor of Zuge Leong. That is quality upgrades right there. We ran it again, 31,500 to 21,500, almost a 10,000 spread again. Then we ran Boudica Artemisia versus that combo, and the Boudica Artemisia performed as about, a, about as well as the Boudica Esong, which should not be too surprising to folks that actually use Boudica Esong. It's a great combo. And if you also have Artemisia, you know that the big advantage of using her over an Esong is just how tanky she is. In terms of the damage output, I think that the Boudicca with Isong still does very, very well. I tried Boudicca with Honda Tadakatsu, and that did worse than the Isong. That did worse than the Artemisia. This should make sense because a part of what Honda is doing is a fat area of effect template hitting many things, just like Ethel Flood's template is really big. It's half a circle. And so he does less skill damage to a single target. So in a dual situation, yeah, no, I mean, it, did worse than the Esong even did. Uh, and then we tried more Nevsky Joan, but this time Zuge Leong with Esong. Now, I have been a outspoken critic of this combo, but I appreciate that some number of people will kind of need to use it because it's what they have. And the reason I've been a critic of this combo is because of the march speed. Subsequently, I have used this combo all KVK long. And before you call me a hypocrite, Understand that I am in the Orleans version of KVK, where you can apply what's called auxiliary skills. That's basically skills from one commander 
onto another. And I put 45% march speed using Edward of Woodstock second skill and Elsa third skill onto my Zuge Leong E song. So in the open field, I've been able to use it. Would I recommend it for most open field battling? No, I would not. That's not to say you can't do it. That's to say that you're a sitting duck. And as soon as people realize that there's a duck that needs to be shot, man, I'm telling you, they will swarm out your march. And even with all the extra health and defense, that's 30% health from Edward of Woodstock, second skill, and 20% defense from El Cid, third skill. And, of course, Esong has 20% defense already from his museum buff, and Zuge Leong has 30% health. I was still getting swarmed pretty hard in the open field with that combo. It's barely tanky enough. So all that to say, I wouldn't recommend this combo, but we've got some testing here that shows how it does if you are using it, and I recognize a lot of people will need to. Now, using this combo, we actually lose to the Nevsky with Joan, okay? From there, Zuge Leong with Isong gets a win against Skippy Prime with Sargon, 31,000 to 25,000. Then, 28,000 to 22,000 with the Nevsky Minamoto versus the Budica Zuge Leong. We wanted to try this combo because the Minamoto does more single target damage. A lot of people are still way behind the meta, which I find very curious. They're still using Nevsky with Joan to rally stuff, and they have not yet learned that Nevsky with Minamoto is outright, not even questionable, not even close, a better rally. And the reason is easy to understand. I mean, the museum buffs you get give a ton of stats onto Minamoto, and Minamoto's all single target damage. Joan's about area of effect. Just because a commander's newer doesn't mean that they're better in every situation. So we tested the Nevsky with Minamoto, and again, 29,000 to about 22,000. Uh, a trade still in favor of Boudica Zuge Leong, which is crazy. That combo is the jam. We also tested Zuge Leong with Cyrus and actually lost pretty significantly. So you can see just how meaningful that Boudica with Zuge Leong is. Cyrus does bring march speed and he does a lot of really cool stuff, but he's not the answer you're looking for in order to elevate your Zuge Leong. Now you could use it. I'm not saying it's terrible. I mean, he has, like I said, the march speed you need and all skills relevant for the open field. But what I'm saying is that Zuge Leong performs much better with your Boudicca Prime. From here, Henry, performing worse as well than the Boudicca Prime. 22,300 to 28,800. And Nevsky Joan is winning. Remember, Boudicca with Zuge Leong was basically unbeatable. And Zuge Leong with Henry is getting beaten. We ran it again. Is this a fluke? No, it's not. 22,900 to 27,700, so about 23 to 28. 5K differential again. This time, a Henry primary did not really perform better. From there, Zuge Leong with Nebu. Remember, this is the combo I plan to use when I'm not in this style of KVK, and 22,000 to 31,000. So even though Nebu brings 30% defense, nice AoE damage, good kit overall, and currently people use Nebu with Esong. Well, Zuge Leong with Nebu is just better, right? I would assume that it is, but still losing to the Nevsky Joan, not as good as the Boudicca Prime. From there, 24,000 to 29,000, Ramses with Zuge Leong versus Nevsky Joan. Uh, people were saying, hey, try the Ramses, try the Ramses. The problem with Ramses, remember, is that he has no base march speed. So he only gets triggered march speed when you're being attacked, which means, okay, you can run away sometimes, but not the combo, in my opinion, that you're ultimately looking for. We tried with the Tommy, but I knew this was going to be bad, and this was one of the worst results. 18,600 to 32,000. Big loss for Zuge Leong with Tommy. And although Zuge Leong seemed unbeatable at the start, that's because of pairing with Boudicca. That's it. From there... Zuge Leong with Amani, just to see what would happen. 20,000 to 34,000. Uh, one of the worst trades overall. Then Zuge Leong with Honda's Hadakatsu. About a 9 to 9K differential here. 23,000 to 32,000. So it was still a brutal trade um, in favor of the Alex and Joan. Uh, that's Alexander Nevsky, GG. Uh, and then we tried, just for giggles, Sargon with Skippy. Now, Sargon is the primary instead of Skippy as the primary versus the Boudicca with Zuge Leong. 
and got about 30,000 to 29,000. So just barely lost the fight. Uh, but Sargon with Skippy was defeated. So what can you take from all of this? I mean, I think the biggest learning is that your best option is going to be Boudicca Prime, Zuge Liang. And that is really cemented for me. Now, the reality is that most people might run two archer marches or they don't have Boudicca Prime and they do have an Esong. So if we look back at these results, it's like, man, can you use Zuge Liang with Esong? And the answer is a resounding yes, absolutely. Sure, the result is not as good as the Boudicca, but the result is still better than almost all the other things we tried. Again, the downside is that you get stuck in the open field. So one way you can mitigate this if you're a newer player to the game is you're going to go in and you're going to craft an accessory anyways that gives you a little bit of march speed. You could use it on your Zuge Leong as you're in the early game and you're building stuff up on your account to give you that speed. In the late game, this is really not a viable option. You need a proper damage dealing accessory if you want to be legit in the field. But in the early game, I would absolutely, no questions asked, recommend putting some March Speed on there in order to mitigate his downfalls. Now, I did mention that we had done some testing to prove to you that a 5-5-1-1 Zuge Liang was going to be about as good as an Esong would be when fully expertise and fully leveraging the museum buff. The museum buff, by the way, is something that you gain access to in your KVK season four and beyond. For Esong, it gives you 5% extra skill damage and 20% extra defense. Now, we ran a number of combos. Uh, I don't think these had any gear, so we could switch around, again, who's the primary, who's the secondary. I don't think we had any of the armaments either. So here is Sargon the Great with Skippy Prime battling into Zuge Liang with Esong. 16,000 to 30,000. Actually, a brutal outcome. And that is a 5511 Zuge Liang. Now, I will mention for this testing uh, that Sasuke has a higher VIP level than me. However, he's going to bring the same number of troops I have. So it ultimately nets out to not matter. From here, we've got Sargon the Great Skippy Prime battling against Zuge Liang Esong. 15,000, actually 16,000 to 30,000. So, uh, actually, this is two huge wins for the infantry. So, even though Zuge Liang at 5511 is usable, I mean, it's not amazing, okay? Compared to the best expertise commanders for infantry, it's really not amazing. From there, we did Boudicca with Esong, and we got about 18,000 to 27,000. So, almost a 10,000 sev wound differential here between these two, and... The Sargon the Great Skippy Prime combo is winning. And that's Boudicca Esong, like they're both expertise, which is actually kind of surprising. So then we test again. And we do Sargon Skippy against Boudicca Esong, get the same result, which is pretty crazy. We test again, Sargon Skippy versus Boudicca Esong, and get about the same result. So what I'm trying to show you here is that even with Boudicca Esong, you're looking at like a 10,000 sev wound differential in favor of the infantry. So then we bring in the Zuge Liang at 5511, and it's about the same result. You're looking at an 11,000 sev wound differential, and then a 12,000 sev wound differential, and then a 10,000 sev wound differential. So the 5511 Zuge Liang was about equivalent to the Esong when we did the little switcheroo. But, you know, I think that the obvious benefit of a 5511 Zuga Leong is that he can just get better as you put more skills into him, right? Then I started using Nevsky Joan, and he used Boudicca Zuge Leong with 5511 on that Zuge Leong skill configuration, about a 10,000 sev wound differential, okay? From there, about a 10,000 sev wound differential again, Boudicca Zuge Leong, and then Boudicca with Esong, about a 10,000 sev wound deferential. So like the same result with an Esong as with a Zuge Leong. And this is how we kind of arrived at the conclusion that, I mean, it's not exactly equal, but it's about the same number of sev wound differential. The result ends up being about the same. Here is maybe the one time it was a little bit more, 17,000 to 32,500. That, that's a wider gap. 
okay? Uh, and that's now using Zuge Leong with Esong, however, which again is a worse combo, even at lower skill levels. We ran it again. It's about the same result. Pretty big differential here, about 18,000 to 35,000. And then we ran Zuge Leong with Honda Tadakatsu. Big differential. Now I'm using Budoka with Esong, 21,000 to 37,000. I'm using Budoka with Esong, 21,000 to 37,300 for the Zuge Leong with Esong. So what can we learn from this particular result? Um, is that Zuge Leong with Esong is performing about as well as Zuge Leong with Honda Tadakatsu, which makes Honda Tadakatsu a much less valuable commander. Because if you can get a similar result with an Esong, and that's a commander you might have expertise ages ago, I mean, why go work on Honda at all? Uh, poor Honda, man. GG. Uh, he, had, he had a short, very short time in the sun, but I think the days have passed when you put sculptures into him. Uh, Boudica with Esong, 23,000 to uh, Boudica with Zuge Liang, 32,000 at 5511. So this is interesting because, like, I've got the expertise Yi song, and he's got the Zuge Liang 5511. And I actually do way better here. Um, and then we ran it again and got the same result. And we ran it now as Yi song Zuge Liang, and I got about the same result. And then we did it, oh God, Zuge Liang with a definitely not max Tommy. I think it's like, what, 5, 3, 1, 5. And yeah, I mean, don't pair with Tommy. So again, my takeaway from all this is that if you've got an Esong and you've got a Zuge Leong at 5511, you could probably swap in the Zuge Leong and get similar results, especially if you value his debuff for big open field brawls, reducing the damage the targets deal for the next three seconds is a big deal. That is a critical debuff and Esong offers no utility whatsoever. So I'm pretty hyped to upgrade into that Zuge Leong as sort of soon as possible. Uh, and I think that Zuge Leong is now one of the top commanders in the game, hands down. You've got Skippy Prime, you've got Zuge Leong, you've got Nevsky, and you've got Joan as probably your top four open field commanders in Rise of Kingdoms. If you found this video insightful, do me a huge favor and throw a like on the video. Consider subscribing because I have more testing to do. I want to show you what the difference is between a 5551 and an expertise Zuge Leong. So I'm going to be doing some testing with this commander at 5511 to show you what that looks like. In fact, that's the only reason I haven't just maxed him on my restart account. I would have already done that for sure. So subscribe so you don't miss that testing, which is going to happen as soon as my KVK calms down a bit more. If you want to see me using Zuge Leong in the field in that KVK that I've been battling in, the card will be in the end screen in just a moment where you can see exactly how it's going. Those cards will be here and here in just a second.